Is it possible to beat Stardew Valley as a barista? Hello my friends, my name is Sapphire, and today I played 100 Days of Stardew Valley as a barista. We got coffee, we got tea, we got little pastries, we got it all here. So place your Starbucks mobile order, and let's get into the rules. As Pelican Town's one and only barista, I am putting limits on what I can sell. And this includes coffee products, tea products, and certain cooked food items like pastries, cookies, and cakes. Lastly, I can also sell honey. And with that out of the way, here are my goals for this challenge. Of course, build from the ground up my own coffee house, grow the most beautiful bee garden, finish the community center, try and cook as many recipes as possible, and the biggest goal of all, make one million dollars. Or gold. With that out of the way, one last piece of housekeeping, I am playing a modded Stardew Valley save file to make this experience more fun for both you and me. The bulk of my mods mostly cover aesthetic and content changes, but I also downloaded a mod that lets me grow coffee in fall as well. I'll have every single mod link down below for your leisure. So sit back, grab your pumpkin spice latte, and let's jump into 100 days of Stardew Valley as a barista. All right, day one, let's get into it. Our journey, of course, starts on the character customization screen. And for this playthrough, I decided to name my character Faye, since it seemed like a really cute name for a barista owning her own coffee shop in the forest. I also chose this cat in the forest farm layout. And then we were off. And quite frankly, I was terrified by this run. I feel like when starting a new Stardew Valley save file, it's obviously super important to make as much money as possible. But with my run, actually getting that money was a different story. How would I get coffee beans? Could I actually be friend Caroline and get tea leaves? Do cookies sell for any money? These were the burning questions in my soul, but I swallowed those fears and got to work regardless. The first steps on the new farm will be getting level 3 farming and foraging as soon as possible to start crafting bee houses, since honey would be a pretty reliable source of income for their game early on. So after checking out some of the new modded recipes I could make, I planted my parsnips and chopped a bunch of wood. And after running out of energy at basically 10 in the morning, I made a stop at the Star Drop Saloon. And you guys, there were tons of new recipes. Like, a lot. Oh my god. Oh god, this is so overwhelming. I didn't even know where to start. But I next headed to Pierre's, check out his seed selection, and you guessed it, you guys, it was so many different seeds. Like, so much. I don't play a lot of modded Stardew Valley, so this is my first big experience with the modded side of things, and oh my gosh, how do you guys do it? I was honestly so scared of wasting any of my precious gold, I didn't even know what to buy. So I instead bought wheat flour to make toast. I had no idea if this was even profitable in the game, but there was only one way to find out. Whoa! <gasps> 725? Uh, okay, that's the new hack apparently. <laughs> With this new discovery, I only had one choice. I bought all of Pierre's wheat flour and made as much toast as humanly possible. I also chopped trees to get level 2 foraging, met Willy, got the fishing rod, gave Caroline her first gift to increase friendship, and made bank overnight with my toast. Business bros absolutely hate her. On day 3 meanwhile, the horrifying thought struck me that I would need to get level 8 farming to unlock the kegs. I don't know how I would do it, but I have to unfortunately. So, with my toast money from overnight, I invested in all of the spring seeds to help me reach level 8 as soon as possible. I also chopped more trees today and started laying out a tree farm for syrups. Day 4 was the first farming disaster. I... I've already suffered enough, really. I have already suffered through enough. But at least today I bought some cauliflower seeds to make up for it. The next day was my very first parsnip harvest, and although I couldn't sell any parsnips, these would be great fuel for mining and farming. I also adopted a cat named Java, reached level 1 farming, bought more seeds from Pierre, unlocked the mines, and started my descent to the ice levels, since such sprites have a small percent chance of dropping coffee beans. 
On day six, I crafted a bunch of scarecrows and spent the morning watering all of my cauliflower seeds. And then, with my toast money, I decided to do something a little bold. Order a coop. Let's face it, you guys, any proper cafe will have tons of egg breakfast products. So this was basically necessity. Afterward, I bought a couple recipes from Gus and some of the weirder seeds from Pierre. Genuinely, I have no idea what fowl seeds or rabbit vine seeds do, so I guess we'll find out together. With rain and good luck on day seven, I journeyed back to the mines to try and reach level 40 ASAP. I ended up hitting floor 20, bought some more recipes from Gus, and then called it a night. On day eight, I gave a gift to Carolyn, planted some potatoes, and sold more toast. I also chopped trees today to reach level three foraging, unlocking tappers. On day nine, I received a note from Lewis for a brown sugar recipe. And side note here, but look how adorable this note is. Modded stuff goes hard. And speaking of birds, my coop was now built and I could purchase some chickens. Except Marnie wasn't working today as per usual. So instead, I crafted some tappers to get tree syrup. I would need oak resins for kegs and maple syrup for bee houses. On day 10, I bought two chickens from Marnie and named them Benedict and Omelette. This is a coffee run after all, so all breakfast food names will be used in this playthrough. Afterward, I returned mining today, making it five more floors down. And the following day, I expanded my toast empire, selling 100 toasts, earning me, oh my god, 14,000 gold? What the heck? Also today, I went mining again, reaching floor 30. On day 12, Demetrius stopped by the farm, and for this run, I chose bats. Also today, my rabbit vine also grew, producing me rabbit. Is this... Oh! Ugh. A gamey cut from a rabbit? That's so gross. Day 13 was the egg festival, and the place where I would finally invest all of my toast earnings into. Strawberry seeds. These little suckers gave a whopping 90 XP per harvested. So, uh, I kind of went overboard and bought 50 of them. I have so much to water. <laughs> it's such an, oh my God. Start watering, start watering. <gasps> I've been working on the railroad just to pass the time away. Can't you hear? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow your horn? Day 14, meanwhile, was very exciting. I was blessed with rain today, so I didn't have to water my bajillion crops. Thank you, Yoba. I also reached level two farming, and my chickens produced their very first eggs. And with the eggs, I cooked a fried egg and a croissant. I also bought a coffee bean from Traveling Cart Lady. A bit overpriced, but a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do to get her coffee. I also bought a silo from Robin and reached two hearts with Caroline, unlocking her tea room and the tea sapling recipe. And the following day, I learned the art of tea brewing from Caroline and made it five more floors down in the mines. Day 16 was a great day for farming. I harvested 30 cauliflowers today, launching me to level three farming. Also today, Caroline gave me the tea sapling recipe and I planted a bunch. To finish off my day, I cooked pound cake, pancakes, and hash browns. On day 17, I had my next big cauliflower harvest. Oh, is it ready? Oh, we're gonna have big cauliflower today, lads. <laughs> um, big cauliflower day, lads. And after watering my strawberries, I reached floor 40 of the mines and could now focus on collecting iron ore for bee houses. And on day 18, my first maple syrups were finally ready, which was perfect timing since I could start crafting bee houses now. I also bought more seeds from Pierre and then cooked more toast, croissant, and pound cake. The next day, meanwhile, was a big spending day. Today, I finally bought a barn from Robin's to start getting milk and cheese products, and I also visited Pierre's to buy some modded seeds, including chamomile and roast starts. And overnight, I earned the cowpoke achievement, which was kind of crazy to me. Who knew selling toast and pound cake was so profitable? With the money I had left over, I bought two more chickens and named them Quiche and Waffle. And to finish off my day, I planted 10 new tea sapling plants. And to my surprise overnight, I hit level five farming. I also had my first big strawberry harvest and then did more mining. 
And on day 22, my first jars of honey were ready to sell. Today was mostly a chill day of cooking some desserts, doing farm organization, and getting ready for the next season. The following day too was pretty chill. I once again reinvested in the toast economy, since I had a couple of big purchases to make before spring ended. Unfortunately for me, the flower dance was the next day on the 24th, and since all of the shops were closed, I watered my crops and headed to the mines to collect more iron ore. I also harvested a bunch of crops today, which got me level 6 farming. Only two more levels to go for those sweet, sweet kegs. After my second strawberry harvest on day 25, I made the ultimate decision to purchase my JoJo membership. For challenges like this, I honestly really prefer doing the JoJo run only because I feel like it's more interesting to see how I can earn money in these ways. So on day 26, I bought two cows named Toast and Cheese. On day 27, I crafted more bee houses, planted more coffee, and upgraded my axe with Clint. And on the last day of spring, I hit level 7 farming, which meant only one more level to get kegs. In celebration, I bought a bunch of new recipes today, including a Star Troops pumpkin spice latte from Robin and a bunch of tea from Gus. I also bought two more cows from Marnie and named them Biscotti and Cookie. And to finish off spring, I brewed my first cups of chamomile tea, which sold for 275 gold per cup. Not too shabby. Anyway, let's head over to summer now. On the first day of summer, I bought a bunch of seeds, planted and watered those, and started arranging the literal cutest bee garden ever. I chose poppies for my first bee garden because poppy honey sells for a lot of money. I also sold some pound cake today and started to prep my farm for the area that would hopefully become my cute cafe tea breeze to shed building. On day 31, I watered my crops, collected my eggs, and milked my cows for the first time. I also started working on supplies to start making cheese presses. Admittedly, the next few days were actually pretty quiet. At this point in the playthrough, I was basically at the mercy of trying to get level 8 farming to make any sort of serious progress. So, I watered my crops, took care of my animals, and cooked more pound cake and toast on days 32 and 33. On day 34, I built the area for my keg production, but I would just need level 8 farming now. On day 35, I had a bunch of new flowers and coffee beans to harvest, and I wasn't exactly sure of the benefits of these modded flowers, so I just stored them in chests for now. I also bought even more recipes from Gus, and invested back in the beloved Stardew Toast economy. And then on days 36, 37, 38, and partly 39, I was getting pretty impatient. I was harvesting coffee beans every single day, but it didn't seem like I was getting close to level 8 farming at all. Now, could I have harvested my poppies for extra experience points? Most definitely, but I would never sacrifice aesthetics for anything else in the world. Thank you very much. I also attended the luau today to buy some decor for my coffee shop, and then knock the socks off the governor with my Gold Star Strawberry Edition. But on day 41, my patience finally tested me, and I couldn't take it any longer. I harvested my poppies, and you know what happened? I didn't even hit level eight. There's no way. All of my poppies. <laughs> oh no. And by day 42, I was freaking out so much that I actually downloaded an experience bar mod just to show me how close I was to getting level eight farming. And just to set the scene for a little bit, I was playing the game at like one in the morning. I was honestly, <laughs> it was a low point for me. Like in American Horror Story, Coven, when uh, Misty Day repeats her personal purgatory and it's her just like cutting open a frog. This is my personal purgatory. Just me trying to level up in farming <laughs> and every day it doesn't happen. I'm nervous. I guess we're gonna find out how close we are to hitting level eight. Perhaps this could be it. Perhaps we're close. Oh. <laughs> like, I, I guess we are close, huh? It's definitely moving. It's just moving slowly. I wonder if I do this one poppy, if it'll go to level 8. If I take this one poppy. No. It, it, it didn't. Well, there, there was no point. <laughs> but day 42 didn't end there. There were a couple more surprises in store for Farmer Faye. 
Also today, I decided to stop by Clint's shop and my eyes could not believe what I saw. Coal seeds? What the hell are coal seeds? I have no idea what coal seeds are, but I was immediately fascinated by it. For once, Clint, you did good. I also bought minecarts today for fast travel and a backpack upgrade from Pierre. On day 43, I finally hit level 8 farming, and I should be more excited, but after that emotional roller coaster, I'm just relieved. And by day 44, it was keg time. I made 13 kegs off the bat, also earning me the DIY achievement. And to my delight, coffee and kegs brews super quickly. We love that. Farmer Faye's coffee shop is now open for business. I made a bunch of coffee variants including a Star Trips Cafe Misto, a Cappuccino, and Triple Shot Espresso. My main goal right now was to still finish every single community project that Joja had available. So next, my main goal was saving up money for the greenhouse. And on day 46, I continued down into the mines and just barely hit floor 60 before the day ended. And the following day, uh yeah, I didn't do much. At least according to my notes I have. So, uh, let's go on day 48, I guess? And overnight, I earned a bunch of money, but I forgot to buy the greenhouse from Joja. So I instead headed to the mines again, reaching floor 70. On day 49, I did my usual chores, crafted another bee house, and then again, just barely hit floor 80 of the mines. I also bought the greenhouse today to further expand my coffee bean empire. And just like that, we're at day 50. Wow, we're halfway there. Wow. Living on the farm. I'm sorry. Day 50 was actually pretty exciting because today I could finally harvest all of my tea leaves. And with my expert planning, I harvested 15. I also crafted a bunch of new teas today including oolong, white tea, lavender milk tea, black tea, and breakfast tea. As a side note, recently in real life I actually just got into brewing tea again and I bought some blueberry tea and just look at this packaging you guys, I have to just talk about it for a minute because are you freaking kidding me? A bear going white water rafting on a blueberry river? I just... it is perfection. Okay, anyways, rant over. Day 51 now. And today, I bought an almond tree sapling from Pierre and more lavender and blue mist flowers to grow in the greenhouse. I also focused most of today on organizing the greenhouse space. And on day 52, I made some more kegs, worked on the greenhouse, and brewed a bunch of tea, coffee, and baked goods, earning me a whopping 14,000 gold overnight. And with this new barista money in tow, I decided to start working on the next big project for the farm, my coffee shop. So today, I chopped a ton of wood and bought a shed from Robin. And while day 54 was pretty chill for the farm, on day 55, I hit level 6 foraging and crafted a bunch of lightning rods for the next thunderstorm. But unfortunately for me, the highly sought after thunder for batteries would not be on my side. But more on this later. And on the last day of summer, I was getting pretty excited for my new cafe spot. So I added a couple new aesthetic mods to the folder to make the shed look super pretty inside and out. And you guys, I was getting so excited because just look how freaking cute this is, ah! But anyways, it is time for fall now. And the first day of fall was a pretty busy one at that. I bought a bunch of pumpkin seeds today to make the fan favorite pumpkin spice lattes. And on day 59, I built more sprinklers, kegs, and dipped my toe back into the toast economy. My next big goal was unlocking the desert next, so I'd have to earn that 40k fast. And by day 60, I was doing pretty good so far, only 10k more to go. I also started working on crafting random stuff to unlock the artisan achievement and the trucker hat with hat mouse, since this hat seemed like the closest I could get to a barista Starbucks visor thingy. And on day 61, my greenhouse plants produced the biggest harvest of my playthrough so far, almost 100 beans. Besides that, I reached floor 100 of the mines, earning me my very first star drop. On day 62, I earned the homesteader achievement, and on day 63, I finished off the rest of the mines. I also smelted some copper ore to do a pickaxe upgrade with Clint. And on day 64, Farmer Faye finally visited the Calico Desert. 
While here, I also bought some items for the cafe, including this cute rug, and the sun tea and star drips coconut milk latte recipes. The next few days meanwhile were pretty mundane. I mostly focused on my daily coffee and tea brewing, and started gathering resources to fix Willie's boat eventually. Meanwhile, on day 67, I really wanted to focus on making my own sugar for the farm, and for that, I would need beets and a mill. But oddly enough, to purchase the mill from Robin, I'd need four cloth. So, to the skull-covered mines we go. And luckily for me, I got all the cloth that I would need for my very own mill. And since I got 10,000 gold from Mr. Chi, I went straight to Joja to buy panning. The following day, I once again headed to Skull Cavern and then got literally two back-to-back -back useless treasure chest floors. Like literally, name an item worse than any of these. I'll wait. And on day 70, I murdered Sebastian. Sorry. With the Stardew Valley Fair happening tomorrow, I did much of my prep work today for it. We also had our very first pumpkin harvest, so I got to brew a bunch of pumpkin spice lattes for the season. And of course, day 72 was the fair, and I was very proud to display all of my coffee and cafe treats. And to my surprise and delight, I got second place. I used the star tokens to buy some decor for the coffee shop, and I also did a little bit of gambling to earn me the really adorable Ghibli-inspired scarecrow for the shop. The following day, I was very happy to find that I actually got all the remaining gold I would need to finish off the Jojo Warehouse. When I first started this challenge, I was very nervous about making enough money, but it seems to have paid off. And on day 74, I truly understood the power of the mill. 27 sugar? Are you kidding me? Okay, legitimate question here. Has anybody actually used the mill in this game? Because you know what? This is pretty game changing. And at day 75 and 3 fourths done with this challenge, I upgraded my barn and got the Joja cutscene. And with this, the following day, I got Willie's note, which meant fixing the boat and doing Ginger Island. But at this point, I didn't have any thunderstorms. And if you were here for my hat challenge, you would know how nightmarish it is to get batteries in this game sometimes. But don't fret, my loyal subscribers, I have a plan. With my new big barn on day 77, I bought four new cows, naming them Nutmeg, Cinnamon, Ginger, and Murray, because my friend Ava told me to. With winter just around the corner, I also started planting more coffee beans in the greenhouse. And also today, the traveling cart lady was selling duck mayonnaise, which I promptly bought. If you know, you know. Perhaps our pal Pinky Lemon here would be our barista worker. Day 78 meanwhile was pretty exciting because today marked the first day of tea leaf season. And today, I got a whopping 30 tea leaves. And that'd be 30 leaves every single day. That's a lot of tea. And the following day, I brewed more tea and coffee and started working on gathering all of the stuff to fix Willie's boat, including smelting iridium and gathering hardwood. On day 80, I upgraded my axe with Clint. It also rained today, but no lightning, which was super unlucky for me. I then continued brewing coffee and tea on days 81 and 82, and day 83 was the Spirit Tea Festival, which meant only one more day tomorrow to get lightning and thunder. It was now or never. But unfortunately, the rain gods did not bless me. So, how could I possibly reach Ginger Island now? Certainly, I would not dare attempt the trap I did for my hat challenge, which was painstakingly trying to grind iridium bats to drop batteries. Oh no, I had a much easier solution this time, guys. Albeit a little cheeky, that involved selling all of my chickens and buying a new one named 787. So, this is the item spawn glitch, and this is a pretty fun glitch that Concerned Ape never patched out. Basically, how it works is you buy a chicken, a cow, whatever you want, and name it a string of numbers that assigns to a specific item in the game. So, for instance, 787 is batteries. When a character, for instance, Marnie, says that person's name, it'll spawn the item in your inventory. So I spent the entire day today going back and forth, selling each chicken and buying a new one every single time to get five batteries. But eventually, they were mine. And you know what? I don't regret it, you guys. And on the last day of fall, oh, would you look at that? Wooly's boat is fixed. Day 85, the first day of winter. 
And to my surprise, the mods I installed also came with new winter seeds to plant, including mint seeds that George gave me. But seeds aside, we had more pressing matters to attend to. Ginger Island. It was here I found my first walnut, met Leo, and found a bunch more walnuts. My main goal here was to try and unlock the island trader and resort for new recipes. The following day, I planted more mint seeds, unlocked West Island, and then got the owl statue overnight. This would make for the cutest decoration for my cafe. Besides that, I mostly focused on trying to earn more money for the catalog, which was a whopping 200,000 gold, plus having to upgrade the farmhouse for 10,000. I don't know why I thought the catalog was like only 100,000 gold, but this was a shock to me. And with the lack of coffee seeds and tea products that I could sell during this period, I uh, may have dipped back into the toast economy. Just a little, a smidge, the tiniest crumb of toast. Um, the following day, I brewed my first cups of mint tea and upgraded the farmhouse. The mint tea saplings only grow in four days, so it's actually pretty profitable to grow this during winter because I earned over 12k gold. Not too bad. At this point, I pretty much abandoned Ginger Island, which was so funny because I was focusing so hard on trying to unlock it in the first place, but oh well. I was nearly finished with my challenge, and at this point, I cared more about decorating than anything else. So for the remainder of my days, I sold coffee and toast and bought both the furniture and wallpaper catalogs. It was also here that I totally forgot that I installed a mod to make cheese tea, which I was just so frustrated at that I forgot this, but I literally brewed my first cups of cheese tea on like the last day of this challenge. But you know what? It's okay. And then last but not least, the very last thing in our challenge is to, of course, decorate our adorable coffee barista shop. I spent about two whole days on this build and I thought it turned out so cute. I was especially trying to make it look super rustic and cottage glory and just make it look adorable in a little forest. I also decorated the outside as well as the inside just to give more room for my customers. And honestly, it's been a hot mess since I even did any kind of building on this channel since Animal Crossing days really. And this was just so fun to experiment with aesthetics and decorating and stuff again. And I honestly wish Concerned Ape had a mode in Stardew Valley where you could do like a creative mode and just have access to the catalog immediately. Wouldn't that be so cool, you guys? But besides that, that will actually do it for the challenge. Again, I love how this cafe turned out. Having the mods make the outside of the shed look so pretty just really is the cherry on top for this. Again, thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's 100 days video. My name is Sapphire. I'm super happy to have you here today. And if you want to stay up to date on all of my future videos, feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you here. We also have memberships for the channel available, so if you want to learn more about perks, click join below. But again, that will do it. I will see you all next time. Have a great day, and bye friends!